Good day students, welcome to our lesson this week in Elementary Logic. In this session, we are going to discuss logical statements. We will also discuss logical connectors. For the introduction, logic is the study of methods and principles used to distinguish correct from incorrect arguments and reasoning. Another term for mathematical logic is symbolic logic. Aristotle is considered as the father of logic. The building blocks of logic are propositions. A proposition is a declarative sentence that is either true or false, but not both. So it's like a switch. It should be uh, on or off, but not both. An argument is a proposition or a sequence of propositions which has a definite structure. It has a premise and a conclusion. Examples of arguments. Number one, all humans are mortal. I am human. Therefore, I am mortal. Another example of argument, if a function is differentiable on an interval, then it is continuous at that interval. If a function is continuous on that interval, then it is integrable on that interval. Thus, if a function is differentiable on an interval, then it is integrable on that interval. Now let's talk about truth and validity. An argument is valid if the conclusion follows from the premise. An argument is also valid if whenever the premise is true, the conclusion is also true. An argument is invalid if the premise is true but the conclusion is false. A valid argument may have a true or a false conclusion. For example, all humans are mortal. I am human, therefore, I am mortal. This is a valid argument with a true premise and a true conclusion. Another argument, all frogs have wings. All animals with wings fly, therefore, all frogs can fly. This is a valid argument with a false premise and false conclusion. So, in determining the validity of an argument, look at the statements. Okay? So, do not base the statements on reality. So, base it on the structure of the statements. So, we are going to discuss categorical propositions, propositional calculus, predicate calculus, and methods of proof. Also, fallacies. But it, uh, these topics will be on the next meetings. I am just introducing logic here. Now, let's talk about categorical propositions. A categorical proposition expresses a relationship between two categories or sets, the subject set S and the predicate set P. Examples of categorical propositions. All numbers are prime. No number is prime. Some numbers are prime. Some numbers are not prime. These are the four standard categorical propositions. Number one, all S are P. This means that all members of S are members of P. 
you can easily visualize this if you are going to express this into a Venn diagram or illustrate this into a diagram. So take a look at this, all S are P. So S is a part of P and all S are P. Second, second is no S is P. No member of S is a member of P. So here, S is outside P. So they are disjoint because no member of S is a member of P. Okay, so do, do you uh, understand the difference? Do you see the difference? Number three, some S are P. Some members of S are members of P. So this look like a, a joint set. So some members of S are members of P. So there is an intersection part. And then some S are not P. Some members of S are not members of P. So they are still a joint set, but this is the part that we're talking about. For number three, some members of S are members of P, so the intersection of S and P. For number four, some S are not P, so some members of S are not members of P. So that, so those members of S which are not members of P. So look at the difference, analyze it. Now, let us express an argument into a diagram so we can identify whether it is valid or not. For example, all frogs have wings. All animals with wings fly. Therefore, all frogs can fly. So, this will be the group of frogs, then the animals with wings. So, all frogs have wings. So, here, uh, all SRP. And then all animals that can fly. So all animals with wings fly. Therefore, all frogs can fly. So as you can see, based on the diagram, the argument is valid. Again, I'm reminding you, uh, base it not on reality or prior information that you know, but base it on the structure of the statement you can make use of a diagram to determine the validity of an argument. Another argument, all past Philippine president were from Luzon. Arab is from Luzon. Arab is a former Philippine president. Okay, so illustrate it in a diagram. So this is the group of the Philippine presidents, the people from Luzon. So, ERAP is from Luzon. ERAP can be here. ERAP can be here. ERAP can be here. So, we cannot determine where ERAP is. So, we cannot conclude that ERAP is a former Philippine president. Therefore, the argument is invalid. Okay? So, again, for the third time, I'm telling you, uh, to determine the validity of an argument, base it on the structure of the statements or the structure of the argument. You can make use of a diagram to, to visualize or illustrate the argument so, can, so that you can easily determine its validity. Letter B, Propositional Calculus. Propositional Calculus, also called Sentential Calculus, is a symbolic system of treating compound propositions and their logical relationships. It treats only propositions that do not contain variables. Simple or atomic propositions are denoted by letters, and compound or molecular propositions are formed using the standard symbols for logical connectors. For Part B.1, Compound Propositions. Let's talk about this. A compound proposition consists of two or more simple propositions joined together by logical connectors. So, in logic, we are using the following logical connectors. 
for not or negation, we're using this symbol or these symbols. And for end or conjunction, we're using these symbols or disjunction. So it looks like an, a letter B, but it's not letter B. If then statement, so a one headed arrow or that. Uh, It looks like for a uh, subset, if then conditional, if and only if, by conditional, a double headed arrow. Okay? But in this case, we will be using uh, for not or negation, this uh, curl one, for end, so this uh, triangular one, which looks like an inverted letter B, or looks like a letter A without a, la an ad a line. And this, this for this junction, we're using this symbol looks like letter V, but this is not B, okay? Conditional, the one-headed arrow, or by conditional, the, the two-headed arrow. Okay? So, type of compound proposition, negation, symbolic form. So, this is read as uh, not P and then not Q. For conjunction, it is read as P and Q. For disjunction, P or Q. Okay? So, take note of the difference between P or Q and P and Q. Okay? So, conjunction and disjunction or. Conditional. So, P implies Q. It is read as P, if P, then Q. For biconditional, P, if and only if Q. Now, so let us use those in logical statements. Let's say this is our propositions P and Q. P, you are honest. Q, you deserve a thumbs up. The antecedent, you are honest, and the consequent is you deserve a thumbs up. So these propositions can be written in different logical forms. For negation, not P, so you are not honest. Not Q, you do not deserve a thumbs up. So the statement the, the statements were negated. For conjunction P and Q you are honest and you deserve a thumbs up. For P or Q disjunction you are honest or you deserve a thumbs up. For conditional if P then Q if you are honest, then you deserve a thumbs up. For biconditional, so let's say this, that's uh, Q if and only if P, you deserve a thumbs up if and only if you are honest. Now, it can be also this way, P if and only if Q, you are honest if, you, if and only if you deserve a thumbs up. For uh, in this example, not P implies not Q, or if not P, then not Q. This is called inverse. If you are not honest, then you do not deserve a thumbs up. For Q, then P, converse. If you deserve a thumbs up, then you are honest. For not Q, implies not P, or if not Q, then not P. That's called contrapositive. If you do not deserve a thumbs up, then you are not honest. Okay, so for your exercises, make logical statements from the given antecedent and consequent in forms letter A, uh, conjunction, B, disjunction, C, conditional, D, biconditional, E, inverse, F, converse, G, contrapositive. So for number one, you will study hard. The, the, the P, and then for Q, you will pass the test. Then for number two, P, I save some money. Q, or the antecedent, I can buy what I need. Okay, so post the video, and then after you answer these exercises, Play it again to check your answers. Okay, post the video now.
Okay, time's up. I guess you're done now. So let us check your answers. For number one, here are our antecedent and consequent. P, you will study hard. Q, you will pass the test. For conjunction, you will study hard and you will pass the test. Very good. For disjunction, or you will study hard or you will pass the test. Okay? Did you correct? Did you get the correct answer? Very good. For letter C, conditional, if P then Q, if you will study hard, then you will pass the test. Very good. For letter D, by conditional, P if and only if Q, you will study hard if and only if you will pass the test. Okay, very good. Next, for inverse, if you will not study hard, then you will not pass the test. Okay, correct. Converse, if you will pass the test, then you will study hard. For contrapositive, if you will not pass the test, then you will not study hard. For number two, P, I save some money. Q, I can buy what I need. For conjunction and I save some money and I can buy what I need. Very good. You're correct. For letter B, disjunction, I save some money or I can buy what I need. Very good. For letter C, conditional, if P then Q, if I save some money, then I can buy what I need. Correct. For letter D, by conditional, now, uh, let us try Q if and only if P. In this case, I can buy what I need if and only if I save some money. Okay. But if your answer is P if and only if Q, your answer will be I can save some money if and only if I can buy what I need. For inverse, if I do not save some money, then I cannot buy what I need. Obviously. So, save, save some money. Okay. So, you can buy what you need, class. And then for app, converse, if I can buy what I need, then I save some money. For contrapositive, if I cannot buy what I need, then I do not save some money. I hope uh, you get the, all the correct answers. Always remember class, do mathematics to learn mathematics. Practice, improve, and stay curious. Keep safe, stay healthy, and God bless everyone. See you next week for our next topic.